So hi everyone, uh, welcome to Good Morning with WebStep. My name is Harriet Wright and I work as an advisor in WebStep Oslo within the insights area and with a special focus on data science. Uh, a little bit about me, I don't come from a technical background, I actually come from an economical background, but I am a huge tech nerd. And if some of you might have noticed, I'm a little bit of a Star Wars fan, if you saw that in the video that was posted on LinkedIn. So I hope everybody has got their cup of coffee and uh, let's get started. So welcome to my presentation about AI and AI for business leaders. And today I'm going to talk about what you need in order to have a successful AI project and maybe give you a few pointers in some good things to think about before you start. So I'm going to talk about AI, machine learning, deep learning, data science, right? Many expressions for basically the same thing. And all these expressions are expressions for machine learning or machine intelligence, basically. But they vary in how they're used and what kind of impact, impact they have. And for the past few years, we have all been bombarded, right, with news about AI. And with all this hype around AI, we now suffer from FOMO, right, fear of missing out. Because AI is actually a really powerful tool for rethinking and reinventing businesses. But if we look at the people that are using AI today, is it actually AI? So in order for me to talk a little bit about the different types of AI that we have and to see if people are actually using AI, uh, I'd like to go through what we like, what we call the machine learning continuum, which basically shows different types of machine intelligence based on their complexity and their tools. Because AI makes it possible for machines to learn from experience they can adjust to new inputs and perform human-like tasks by combining maths and computer science. And we have different levels for this. So the first level is systems that act. And this is basically rule-based automatics. And an example for this is, for instance, your fire alarm in your home, or for instance, the cruise control in your car. Now, when organizations or a lot of organizations say that they have AI, this is usually the type of AI that they have. Rule-based mechanics, which isn't really uh, capable of doing any type of dynamic actions or make dynamic choices. Then we have systems that predict. And these are systems that can analyze and use it to create simple predictions. And it's often used in, for instance, online stores, you know, in order to have customers buy more when you're, on, when you're actually in the store and putting things in your basket. Then we have systems that learn. And these are systems that can make more or larger, bigger predictions. And they actually need less programming uh, because they can be taught to do specific predictions. And this is what we call machine learning. And for instance, you can see self-driving cars is a system that learns. Then we have systems that create. And I know that we humans like to think that we're probably the only creative things out there, but now we have systems that can produce text, they can produce pictures, music, etc. So we're not the only things that are creative out there. And I think the best example I can give you is a company that's called Flow Machines. And they have fed a lot of Beatles songs into their system and then asked the system to create similar songs with just the beats and the tunes. And then they had Beatles expert listen to the tunes and they couldn't actually find out what was a Beatles song and what was not a Beatles song based on the creativity that the system actually created. So it's really, really cool. Then we have systems that relate. And this is about emotional intelligence, right? That we can see if somebody's happy, if somebody's sad, if they're angry or whatnot. And within systems now, it's what we call sentiment analysis. Then we have systems that master, and this is quite cool. So a child, a human child, only needs to see a picture of a tiger once in order for them to actually remember that it is a tiger. While a system actually has to see a picture of a tiger, say at least a thousand times to be able to remember that it is a tiger. And it doesn't actually 
and the system is not able to understand other representations of a tiger. So a kid would know that a tiger in a comic is a tiger and a tiger costume is also a tiger, but a system won't be able to do that. And why is that? Because we humans are systems that master. So we don't have a problem with constructing concepts and representations about the world around us with very little data. But systems have troubles with that. But we are seeing an increase in what we call reinforcement learning, which is going to be able to, you know, help systems master. So we're getting there. And then finally, we have systems that evolve. And this is probably one of the most interesting aspects, because this is what we call artificial general intelligence, the AGI, you know, the big superhuman intelligence. And there's a lot of research going on here, and there's a lot of skepticism around it as well. But basically, a system that evolves can dynamically change its design and architecture in order to adapt into the environment it's in. Now, today, as I said, we don't have that, but there's a lot of research going on. Now, with all these seven different systems, we see that when people say they're doing AI, it's sort of in quite a simple state of doing AI. Because you might have heard that teenage, uh, AI is like teenage sex. Uh, everyone talks about it. Nobody knows how to do it. Everyone things everybody else is doing it and so claims to do it themselves because yes we do need to get on the ai train but it as it is really important that we have some ground pillars before we start doing an organizational wide ai project and why is that it's because we have two really big challenges and the first one is that 85 percent of ai projects actually fail and the other challenge is nobody really knows where to start and that's why we at Webstep, we claim that the number of successful machine learning projects or AI projects can be increased by using a structured process and evaluation before the start of the actual project. Because the reality is AI isn't magic. It's hard work and it requires the right tools, the right methodologies and the right mindset to overcome the challenges that companies face which is, for instance, data complexity, talent scarcity, and the lack of trust in AI systems. So if we look at the different problems, the first one is expectations. And that's because there's always very, very different expectations within a company what the AI is going to solve. And this is about building an AI-ready organization. What is the AI supposed to help with? Does everybody understand that a project takes a lot of time? And do you have actual definitive targets and what the AI is going to solve? The next one is teams and at least qualified teams within your organization. And it's about who is going to lead the project because it's not necessarily the CEO or the CTO. It could be the CIO or the CDO, or it could be somebody completely else. And you also need to have the roles that you actually need. So you need to find you need to hire more people or maybe hire in some consultants that can help you out. Then we have scope creep, which is basically we don't know what we're looking for, right? We've all heard, you know, I want an AI today. And then you go, okay, that's fine, but you need to know what you're looking for. You need to wear to start in order to start using AI. It's like for me giving you this photo of where is Waldo? And if I didn't tell you, or you didn't know that you were supposed to be looking for Waldo, you had no clue what you were looking for in this picture. And that's the same with AI projects. And for those of you who are interested, Waldo is just there in the middle, enjoying the sun. And then finally, and most importantly, which is something that you've probably heard a lot about before, is data. And at least the lack of data and the data complexity that we find within organizations. You know, do you have silo data, lack of data, maybe too much, much disorganized data, bad data, or problems with data quality and volume? These are things that you need to talk about. And what we sometimes say is that there is no AI without IA. And this all comes back to the data, the information architecture, and how you actually structure your data in order to have an AI-ready organization. Because we often forget that we need to do something about the data. 
because you can't put an AI project on randomly data because what you get is you get shit in, you get shit out, unfortunately. And this is where the hard work comes in. So in order to start an AI project, you need to have a look at your data and the data needs to go through what we call a data pipeline or an AI ladder, I like to call it, which is basically about these steps. So we have ingest, cleanse, curate, store, and apply. And there's steps one to three with ingest, which is basically collecting the data, cleansing, data preparation, and curate, which you added different features to your data. And a lot of people think that this doesn't take a lot of time, but a data scientist usually, what does 80 to 70% of his time or her time doing these three steps. And maybe for a few lucky ones, it might be down to 60. But it's about making your data simple and accessible. And this step is really important. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order. We have seen that uh, it varies from different projects that we're in. If it's, you know, if it's the, in the order ingest, cleanse, or curate, it depends on what data you have, what data you need to collect, and et cetera. But this is something that our data scientists and web set knows a lot about and have good answers for. But all in all, it's about collecting the right data, right? And making sure that your data is simple and accessible. And this step, as I said, it's time consuming and it can often be automated. Then we have step four, which is about storing your data and the information architecture. And this can often be very expensive. And we need to know if we are storing it on-prem, are we storing it in the cloud? Maybe we're doing a hybrid model. But the thing here is that the data needs to be centralized, which we know a lot of companies are far behind, far behind on. But this is where the no AI without IA comes in. So it's about getting your organization AI ready and cloud ready with the right information architecture. And then finally, we have the publish, where we can publish the data so that an algorithm or machine learning model can actually go through the data, make sense of it, and find some insights for you. And this is always often done through different APIs, you know, sort of an entry point to where your data is. And therefore, we end up having loads of different AIs, so it can be a little bit chaotic. Now, if we go through all these steps and actually start a project with AI, you can operate, operate, and operationalize it and infuse AI throughout your organization and you actually will become a complete AI organization. So this is one way of representing the AI ladder. Uh, and we have many other companies who represent it in a different way. Uh, for instance, this is IBM's way of representing it, but it's all about you know, collecting the data, organize it, analyze it, and infuse it in your organization. And Amazon, Google, and Microsoft also have the same kind um, of ladders, but they, of course, call it different things just to confuse us a little bit, but that's what it is. But, it, you know, as I said, again, collecting your data, organizing it, analyzing it, and infusing it into your organization. So when we've done this, it's all about starting the process of actually going through a complete AI project and start using machine learning. And the process that we usually use in WebStep is based on an open source model that's called the CRISPR-DM model. And that stands for the Cross-Industry Standard Process for Data Mining Methodology. Very, very long and very confusing, I know. But basically what it's about, it's about understanding uh, the business for the client, so a web step, for instance, would understand properly the client's business. Then it's about revealing the AI readiness of the organization. Then it's about identifying possible areas for the use of AI. You know, find the low hanging fruits. Where is it most easy to get a quick ROI? Do a POC, reevaluate, reassess, and finally put the project into production. Now, it's important to know before you actually go ahead with an AI project, it might not actually be, you know, the typical AI, which is the best solution for you. It might be something completely different. So you need beforehand, you need to choose the right method for you. If it's business analyzing, it might just be you need visualization of your data or advanced analytics, or that you actually need machine learning. So this is something you also need to go through. And then again, with the roles of the project, what, which roles do you need? for the different types of method that you might be using, which is a good overview here. 
And then, of course, training and developing of the model. You need to work iterative because the model is never going to be, you know, completely finished taught. A bit like us human beings. We can always get more information and we can always become smarter and get more knowledge. Now, another two tools I'd like to just show you before we start uh, getting to the end is we often see a problem that the tech side and the business side have some sort of issues getting aligned. And because the tech, the tech department and the business department don't often speak the same language, right? But fortunately, we are seeing a very positive change where that more of the top management in companies are coming from a technical background. And in order to sort of uh, tighten the gap between these two, we have two different canvases, which we have had a very good experience in, in some of the project to sort of align and make sure that the gap between the tech and the business are getting smaller when it comes to an AI project. Because then we have an AI canvas and a machine learning canvas, and they actually talk about the same project, but with some different values so that the business and the tech decide actually knows what they're talking about and they're both on the same page. So these are some very good tools to have a look at before you start going through an AI project. Now, to sum up a little bit, uh, starting an AI project is basically about asking a lot of questions, right? You need to ask a lot of questions to find out where you want to be and where you want to go. And it's about framing the problem that you have. You need to find the problem, you need to frame it, and hopefully it'll be quite small in the beginning. Then you need support from the leadership, because if you don't have support from the leadership, it's never going to happen. And you need to start collecting data as soon as possible, process the data, explore the data, and start playing with it. You know, just do a little project, just try to do something to see if you can get some insights into it. And you need to communicate your results. I said in the beginning that trust is really important. And this is where communicating and visualizing the results comes. It doesn't matter if it's big or if it's small, it just needs to be visualized. Because that is the only way that you can establish trust in your AI, in your organization. Because if people don't trust it, people's not going to use it. Exactly. And then we're back to square one. So I thought by wrapping up, I'd give you a few tips on some book recommendations that I have, which I've read, which are really good. Uh, if you want to get a better understanding of how to get started with AI, what it is, but don't want to get too technical about it. So basically AI for business leaders. Now I'd really recommend these two books here. Uh, the first two ones are more general. The third one is a little bit more technical, but you, I think you all understand what it's all about. Um, so that's a wrap from me, really. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting. Maybe I'll give you a few pointers, something to think about. Um, in WebStep, we are 30 data scientists that can help you out and get started with some of the tools that we have uh, in order for you to have a successful AI project. So um, everyone, thanks for listening and uh, have a great day.